All right, so um, this is a video on explaining why it makes sense to automate workflows. So, um, hi, Yana. Um, so can you describe me uh, what what is in this directory that you're showing to me right now? File with data preparation files. Do you mean that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean that. So, how do you know, like, in which order to run these files? Uh, well, for now, I'm like step one, step two, and step three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. But for instance, you have like two step threes, right? So it's combining data and preparing data. Yeah. Which one do you run first? Yeah. Um, well, I only run combining data. <laughs> uh, okay. And about these getting artists and getting labels, when do you run them? Do you run them first, like? Uh, before no, no, step they are, one? They are now in step one. They're now in step one. Okay. So the thing is, like, what make files do is they tell the computer how to run files and in what order. So um, that's very important because, like, you're seeing that your project is already growing increasingly complex, right? So yeah. you, need to, you need to keep a logbook, essentially, of how to run your files. Not only write the files that you run, but like, okay. And that's what make files do, okay? So one thing um, that I want to check now is whether you have this tool installed that does it, right? So I'm opening your command prompt here, and I type make. Yeah. And uh, you have already make uh, installed. So for everybody who doesn't have this installed, you can check the installation instructions at tilburgsignsup.com, right? So we can use this tool make to write a recipe. Okay. And what I'm doing now is I'll open, um, um, a text editor here. Um, actually this doesn't work so well because I want to, um, remove the text thing. Okay. So what I'm doing is I call this make file, but what I'll also do is I will change the setting so I can change this from text document and remove actually what this document is. Right. And I have to go to your settings here and um, have to find um, something about types. You see something about types here, like hide the type. Um, extends each from the, yeah, this is it. So right now, when you check this option, you see this is a text file, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. So now I'll just make this a regular make file. And this is the file in which I will write my recipe. So, uh, for instance, I could just use an editor. Um, do you have Notepad++ or something, or do you just use the cloud log, the editor? Uh, I think I only have Cloudlog. Okay, that's fine. Good enough. Okay, so let me open it. It's empty, right? So then the other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we can call R from the command prompt. So I'm opening the command prompt again, and I type R. And you have installed it correctly because we can access R from the command prompt, right? Yeah. Okay. So good. So now we can start. So what is the uh, um, what is step one? Step one, preparing data version four. Is okay. Step one, preparing data version four. Obviously, this is like something that I hope that you will change, right? Because it doesn't make sense keeping the versions like this. You should use like a versioning software like Git or something, right? But this tutorial yeah. is just about this make file. Good. Okay. You can define rules on how to build stuff. Okay. So can you tell me this uh, preparing data? What is it generating actually? Um, let me see. I'm opening it using our studio. That's okay. Yeah. So this thing, what is it generating? What is it saving at the very end? Uh, this. File. This. Okay. You should also get rid of these version numbers, right? Because when you adopt like um, like this versioning system, there's only one version, maybe the, the, the main version, the head version of everything, okay? Yeah. You understand that? Okay. So what I'm doing is I'll tell, can I change this? Can I remove this version thing? No. <laughs> None of this is. Okay, you can clean that up later, okay? So what I'm doing is I'll um, tell first what the program will build and then I will tell the program what files it requires to build this okay so to generate this file it depends on this file okay and you can add other dependencies are there any other things that are here 
you'll see that later. I don't think I would put, include the raw data because that raw data will never change on your system, right? So we leave it like this. And now we need to tell um, make on how to run this. And we can use the following code. Okay. And now we can define a build rule. So again, what do we want to build? We just call this all. And to build all, we want this file to be built. Okay, just bear with me a second. Okay. All right. So what I'll do is first, I'll try whether the commands that I've typed are correct. And by typing dash n, actually, I tell make, hey, uh, tell me what you would build, but don't build it yet. Okay, so it's like kind of a, a dry run, so to say. And it says like, oh, now to build the project, I have to conduct this rule, right? So yeah. if we do this without the n, it will now start to building your project, okay? The first step of your project. But now you also have a step two, right? Let me just call this step one, okay? So what is step two? Let me navigate back to the file. So what, we need this, preparing data, right? Yeah. Okay, then and then the last the version, but please get rid of these version numbers, okay? So with yeah. versioning it to them. So I'm looking at this file. Um, let me see. Opening our studio. And here at the very top of this file, you're reading in probably the output Oh, this is still raw data, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with this file? Where do you read that in? Um, I think it's step three. Oh, it's step three. Okay. So let me just do step. So step two is uh, actually uh, uh, independent of step one, right? You don't need to run step one yeah. to be able to run step two, right? So already here, it's like a little odd because uh, then, it, yeah. Um, so that, that's not so clear. So let me see what this one generates. Okay. So I'll go down to the, to the thing. Is this generating anything at all? Uh, yeah, this is just mess and this is what it's generating. Oh, it's saving, it's saving this. Okay. So let me see. So I'll put that in here too. So we have a step two, which is generating this CSV file. And it depends on step two, preparing, preparing data version 5.r. And I just copy the file name here, right? So now to build the entire project, these two files need to be built, okay? Yeah. Okay, so if I do yeah. make n, hey, what do I need to run to build the entire project? It just shows this, um, probably because, let me see, because we haven't changed this code yet. So the last time that you build this, the files are up to date. Suppose we are changing the code here and saving it, then Suppose we would rebuild your entire project, probably make will now recognize that it also has to update and run step two. See? And now comes the beauty of this because now we can go to step three. So um, let me, this is combining these two data sets, right? So let me copy it. So I think, I don't know what you generate, but you need this file and it depends probably on these two files, right? On what you generated in step one and step two, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what is it, see, and now again, what is it uh, saving? I need to, to see that too. So I think it's saving this little guy, right? So this is what we say, this is what we build. This is what it depends on. And then the last line, like following this, is like how to run this. And I think we just run this by running this R file, right? Mm -hmm. So now, actually, this is not all. This is like pre clean steps. We can call it this pre clean steps. It's not important anymore. To build your entire project, all we need is we want to build this file. Okay? 
you, you understand this? We are like crazy creating the dependencies between your code yeah. and the inputs and outputs. So if I write make n now, it recognizes, oh, I also have to run step three. Yeah. Okay. So how long do your scripts run? Actually, like when uh, you... Yeah, the second one takes pretty long. Okay, second one takes pretty long. So, yeah. um, um, I think um, it just makes sense trying to run this one. Like, what is long? Like, how, how long does it take? Um, yeah, I don't know. It has been really dependent on when I do it. I don't know why. Oh, okay, okay. Well, okay, I need to come up with a mock example then. Um, so, um, let, me, let me take out step two for now. Okay. Um, no, oh, oh th this is actually something. Okay, so this is like advanced stuff, but we can actually tell make to think that step two has already been done. Okay. Okay. So we get some options and then we can consider, let me see, we can do O and consider a file to be like old, like not to rebuild this, right? So if we, okay. if we write make, make o step to preparing data version 5.r and n not executing it it would just do the first step and the third step okay so these are re reasonably fast is that true uh, yeah okay so let me run it and now it's opening up r and it already says hmm our studio is not running because you're using a command which is particular to our studio okay now the important thing is that you get this working also at the command prompt. So when you go to this first step, I think it's here, right? You don't need to tell actually yeah. on what um, uh, path it is. I mean, you can use this try option, silent equals true. So it will try to run it, but not raise an error message if it, um, if it occurs. So I'm doing it again, and now it's loading all of your stuff, okay? So let us wait a bit, okay? Just like a couple of minutes for this to go through. Are you fine with this? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. But I think the, uh, the setup problem is also in step three. Yeah, okay. So we can change it. Um, so we'll just wrap the things that we don't worry too much about crashing. We can just put them here, all right? Okay. So this takes a little while. So not right now you're reading in the label list. Um, okay, so data prep steps. Now you already see that the second file is being executed, your step number three, right? Yeah. And it's merging your data. And the beauty of this is you'll see that in a second. So right now your steps are already done and like in a few seconds, I think uh, it's going to exit. So it's saving a couple of things. By the way, you need to tell that you're saving multiple data sets because we right now told make that only one data set yeah. is generated, right? Yeah. So right now everything is done. So let's see what happens when we execute our make command again using the end option because we don't want this thing to rerun, okay? It says there's nothing to be done. Everything has been done, right? Yeah. So okay. um, the cool thing is like only by typing make slash dash, dash n or just make overall you'll tell your computer to build everything that is necessary to rebuild your project but if everything is up to date nothing will be done so if you define your yeah. make file in a proper way you can like uh, iterate very very fast because you would only have to run parts of your project that need rebuilding so now yeah. Suppose you're changing a couple of things in one of those scripts. I don't know. I'm just like, putting in a few characters, but let's imagine this is like an important change to my file. Now running make n would say like, hey, I have to build the entire pipeline again from like step one to step three. Now let's suppose I unro unroll this change. I don't know whether make recognizes this now, but no, it didn't recognize it. So I'm adding so I'm adding a parameter just to just to assume that this file is unchanged uh, is old. Then it would recognize everything is up to date. You see. So using yeah. this, it's, it's pretty fast. Normally, you don't have to exclude anything with these O options. This makes it like very complicated now in this tutorial. So I apologize. Uh, I apologize for this. But it's just because you mentioned to me that step two would take too much of time on your own computer, right? But if you 
run this once now and just wait, then you're all set up. Okay. So the messages you use like make files in which you uh, define recipes on how to assemble your code together. And the recipe is always defined by a target. So what is, what is it that needs to be built? It could also be multiple files. So I think in step three, you're building multiple files. So you can just, uh, you can just, uh, uh, you know, add a second file here. I don't know, maybe this is active2.csv or something like this, right? So that's the first thing that's, okay. that's the target. Then it's what files does it depend on? Okay. So you can have a list of files here and then the line following that is like, and how to do it. And that's typically when you work with R, it's just like a command, uh, in which you tell R to execute a file. And does it matter where you save the make file? Does it have to be? No, it needs to, order? it needs to be in your code directory because everything is relative to that code directory. Okay. okay but if I to add something from yeah. this folder, well, but, but typically you, you're working with like a modular structure. So let me show that to, to, to everybody. So you have three modules, one in which you prep the data, one in which you do the analysis, one in which you do the paper, right? So typically each of these modules has its own make file because uh, typically tip. So, and then you just have like a make file here, but there's only what, like one step. So that's going to be like a plain, uh, a very simple make file, right? But also your analysis will grow. I think you're working on your analysis right now. So also you'll have like a bunch of files here later on. Okay. So one make file in each of your modules and um, yeah. And then the other suggestions for you to, to work on is use Git to get rid of these ver like artificial versionings here. You're not versioning properly. So, so that you need to do. And then also as a result of this, you can get rid of your version specific file names in the output files, right? Now you call it playlist V3. Yeah. Suppose everything is versioned. If all your source code is versioned, you can just roll back to an old source code and reprep the data. And then your playlist CSV will be the old version, right? So it does yeah. not make sense to generate files with version numbers. And if you do this, I'll promise you, like if you, if you work with these make files properly, you're going to get uh, efficiency gains, um, uh, like, like, I don't know, so many efficiency gains because you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just take away that worry of what to run when.